What is sacred? Does one feel that there is such a thing as the sacrosanct? Do you understand what is meant by this, or is there just too much haste in oneself to bother with this inquiry? Is there too much haste to not see that this is not just an inquiry, but a quest to find out if there really is meaning to it all? How much are you willing to give to find out? How much has one been willing to give up at this point to find out? To not treat the search for the sacred as some tepid curiosity or just another vacuous concept to amuse and entertain yourself with for a few moments, but something which brings weight and meaning to that which so many have called truth. Have you seen yet that the sacred is something so precious, so valuable that it must be protected at all costs? It must be set apart from everything else, set apart and kept safe from those eyes that lust after everything that is beautiful only to devour and consume it. Those sadistic eyes that see what is beautiful and pure and vow with feverish delight that they will do everything they can to desecrate and dishonor it. Do you want to comprehend what evil is? That's what it is, the desecration of the sacred. Evil and its agents exalt insanity, madness, and the profane while mocking and belittling all that is spiritual. That's the task of darkness, a black hole that does everything it can to siphon every ounce of the light and life out of you, and then when you've been reduced into a pile of ashes, it pisses on you, just so you feel even more rotten and worthless. It's the one that does everything it can to rip you open with the sword of its words, and then once you've been cut open in a thousand places, it pours the salt of its insults all over your wounds to drive the pain it's inflicted even deeper. Then, when it's finished desecrating what it has sought out to destroy, this malevolent and dishonorable clown props itself up as your savior. It props itself up as a guide that needs to lead you away from all the deceptions in the world. It puts itself on a pedestal and proclaims that it's protecting you from the forces of evil. That's how sadistic and corrupt it is. That's always been the warning of the parable of Adam and Eve in the garden. The kingdom was yours, and a deceiver was allowed to implant its Trojan horse ideas into you so that it could annihilate the kingdom from the inside out. Just like the snake in that garden, it lures you in at first by pretending to be your friend, and then once it's given you its poison to drink, it gets to work immediately at making you feel inferior. It is the grand expert at gaslighting. Adam is from the Hebrew word meaning earth, and when the heart ate from the fruit of the tree of death, it became the slave of death. Does one see it now? Because for this whole world, we are well past the point where we get to ignore what is really going on here. It's just sheer refusal to not see what is going on now. A complete will to deny. A denial that has utilized every single moment to falsely justify the continuity of one's actions in this circus toilet. It's just sheer desperation now to believe that this fictional empire is going to continue indefinitely, absolutely ravaging the entire earth so that everyone can keep chasing after that monetary toilet paper, pissing and shitting it all away. It's gone beyond being a joke. It's sheer blasphemy, utterly disgraceful. And those who cling to their willful denial have no concept whatsoever of who they are dealing with, who our true creators are. Are you not on fire for the truth yet? Are you not ready to put it all on the line to get away from this place? Do you think that the devil himself is going to come knocking on your door, take your hand, and walk you out of hell while beseeching you for forgiveness? Do you think that you're going to be protected by this system while it's flailing about in its death throes? 
Has it not already been so obvious how empty those promises of protection are that come from the godless rulers that operate this death ride? Who are the ones that are going to stand by you when push comes to shove? The heart already knows the answer to this because we have now been witness to it. And if that has been the preview thus far, what does one think the main attraction is going to be like? There are a lot of cowards out there who are ready and willing to throw you under the bus to save themselves. And the kingdom of the heart has no interest in any of them. Why would it? That's not the correct vision in the slightest. As it has been said, it's time to separate the wheat from the tares. That's what this is all about too. Building the true kingdom, whereby God has given each of us a piece of that truth which is the heart. In mocking formation, the devil gave each of us a piece of its false empire too, which is obviously the dualistic, morose, and contradictory mind. The test has always been which one we end up following. Does one bow down at the altar of the mind, or instead take the correct course of action which will crown the heart? Have you sat in silence and listened to the earth yet? Are you feeling the enormity of its pains? Where are you right now? Still getting caught up in the distractions? Believing that they're going to lead somewhere? Still treating it all like a joke? Binge watching garbage flicks, chasing the next vacation, clamoring for that next toilet paper dollar, drowning in drugs and alcohol, ritualistically taking long scrolls on digital beaches that absorb wave upon wave from the ocean of imbecility and narcissism. Is the narcissist ready to take a bullet for their brother and sister? Are they ready to die for the ones they say they love so much? Words are meaningless without the proof, which is why what will reverberate throughout eternity are one's actions. The kingdom of the heart is not about the difficult, it's about the impossible. Are you ready to attempt to prove it out? Are you preparing yourself for the opportunity of an eternity? Or is getting distracted still the priority every day? The earth is dying, and this is when everything gets as serious as a heart attack. Go ahead and mock it. All day long, the twisted, perverted, and insane freak posse is mocking and degrading the sacred because it suffers from a severe inferiority complex, which is tangent with its extreme hubris. The insane wear their hubristic attitude with a badge of honor, proud to be one of the circus freaks that scoffs at everything inspirational. Its laughter is derisive because in its godless, blind arrogance, it fails to see who gets the last laugh. The time for going easy and being a pushover to the diabolical is done. It should have always been done, but now there are no longer any excuses to use. Ignorance is a clear and defined choice now. The heart is about complete vulnerability, being right on the front lines in the battle of life, totally open, completely exposed. It doesn't hide or cower in fear. It's not afraid of the pains that it knows it's going to confront. It is dauntless. It faces the fear and says, do your worst. There is no price that can be paid for that which is priceless invaluable, sacred. Treating the priceless as a commodity to be bought and sold and tossed around like a piece of trash is the most heinous blasphemy. It is beyond atrocious. A grave joke. The one who sees and gets this is willing to pay the ultimate price to set the heart free, which proves out one's seriousness. The true heart is willing to give it all, to die for the ones they love, to die for the whole earth. The heart has to be willing to go to the furthest extremes. There is no dabbling, 
There are no sort ofs or degrees. It's everything or it's nothing. No in between. That's the consequence. To not give everything means that things are missed, and to miss is to sin. The heart is always ready to lay it all on the line, the totality. Only the truth inherits the kingdom. Half hearted is a lie, a deception. There is no room in the kingdom for even a single lie. Live on your knees as a beggar or die standing as a king. The works on here that have been put out into the public so far stand as their own homogenous archive. It should have felt like it was a denouement of sorts because that was the intention. From this point on, I'm going to, with the rest of my available time that I have, speak without any visuals. Thus, Everything from this point should be considered to be just like a conversation. I'm going to speak plainly, and hopefully a better understanding will come about for everyone who is listening and participating in these conversations. If I feel that it's appropriate and important, I'm going to speak directly to some of you. Answer your questions verbally as opposed to just typing out a response. If I end up doing so, I will always be completely respectful as I couldn't imagine being any other way. If you don't want me to answer you personally in the public, please just let me know. One way that I prefer to see it is what would it be like to sit at some of your kitchen tables while having a cup of tea? Perhaps we could treat this like that. Many of you have been hearing and watching what has been brought forth on here for years. And I want you to realize that I have also treated my responsibility as a sacred duty. To symbolically take on the designation of teacher is not something that I have ever handled carelessly. I very much have always known the potential weighty impact that spiritual instruction can have on an individual. It can change absolutely everything. But it should always be known that one has to take responsibility for their own choices and actions too. As I've said before, blame is lame. But when one takes total responsibility for themselves, then the consequences of one's choices have the potential to bring forth enormous meaning. Those who blame or ridicule others take away the possibility for the sacred reaching their heart. That's obviously the lesson of science as well. The atheistic science does everything in their power to take God or the Creator out of the equation of everything, and it's quite evident what the consequences of that are. It brings forth nihilism, and this is why so many who solely believe in scientific progress cannot see the absolute devastation that has been brought about because of that approach. Consequences for actions always come full circle. It's the law of creation. There's the old adage, what goes around comes around. And I've said the same thing in a different way before. The circle must always complete itself. So in saying that, sometimes my visits will be short and sometimes they'll be longer. But one thing that is also important to learn is to carry no expectations. Expectations often lead to disappointment because one creates an appointment with how they feel things should turn out. We'll get more into that as well, including the significance of the two quotes that I provided. Thank you very much for your time. May you be well as this finds you.